Okay, so once again, it is important to know or important to have done some of the homework because the homework got you to talk about it, to look at a graph, to think about it in a proper way. Today, we're going to take that knowledge, the ability to look at something and, and pull out information to analyze a graph. And in that analysis, you're going to be calculating something for me. Because these numbers are going to represent what you've been thinking about, how you've been analyzing it uh, up to now. Let's go easy. Starting off, the, the graph below describes the cost of a trip to an amusement park. The cost is based on the number of rides you go on. Oh, so I guess the entry, free, entry fee is free. Okay. Determine the independent and dependent variables. Very quickly, someone want to analyze this graph for me? Very quick, hit them. Good, okay, in dollars. All right, describe the rate of change. I didn't tell you, I didn't ask for the number, I simply asked to describe it. Yes. Right, rate of change. Um, you can, but we're gonna get to the number very soon. So for now, I'm happy with this. Can you all just also describe whether the rate of change is changing or increasing, decreasing, or staying the same? Wait, I didn't ask whether it's positive or negative. I asked, is the rate of change getting bigger and bigger and bigger? Or is it getting smaller, smaller, smaller? Or is it constant? That there's two aspects. Jesse? Yeah, it's constant. How do you know? Just very briefly. Then. Okay, so the word is linear. It's, it's staying the same. Yeah, right? It is a straight line, which means every step of the way is identical to the previous, as well as what's going to come after. Okay, here's another part of the analysis. Can you describe the rate of change in units? What does the rate of change represent? Okay, so yeah, you, you actually summed it up really well. So if we were to analyze it, we would say the rate of change represents uh, your cost for every ride um, taken, I don't know, right? In other words, the unit would be dollars per ride. Yes. Well, it's, by unit, it's just dollars. Oh. So how many dollars? We, we don't have to specify just yet. It's coming. Okay. So if you if that is our unit, what of the two, independent or dependent, what is on top as a fraction and what is on the bottom? It's just a matching game. My unit is dollars per ride. Take a look at the independent versus dependent. What, how would I actually calculate in terms of numbers? Yeah. Yeah. In other words, the dependent divided by the independent. In other words, the X, oh, sorry, the Y divided by X. That's it. So we will go down. How do we calculate the rate of change? Let's see if I could highlight everything that goes up. Um, I'm gonna go further and say, calculate the unit rate yep, by dividing the change in Y, I'll do it in brackets, dividing change in Y, by change in X. Okay. So again, this is just an example for me to establish an equation I'm going to give you. Not even an equation, it's actually a formula. This 
formula that we're going to see in the next page, you must have seen once, at least once in science class. Okay? You must have seen it in, in a variety of different aspects. And some of you, I remember, you used the word slow. You must have seen it before. Okay? Question? Correct. You'll have to count it for now. But sooner or later, I'll show you how to calculate it. As well. Yep. Right. So, just as an example, in this graph, let's calculate how far I ran to the right and how far I rose up every single dot. So in this case, this triangle, I move my change in X, I'm gonna do it as a triangle because that's scientific. My change in X is a one. How much did I change in Y? My change in Y is a two. It can, but for now we are not, but we, we will use a Cartesian plane soon. Correct. All right, let's continue. So my formula for you. Correct. Because we want to see, remember, how, think about, think loosely, like independent versus dependent. The X changes and it causes the Y to change, right? The independent changes first and it causes the Y, to change, the dependent to change. So I want to say, how much did this change if I change by one? It's, it's a very natural way of asking the question. Anytime you have a conversation with someone, they will always talk about the why before they talk about the x, because they're more interested in the results. So anyways, let's talk about, so the rate of change describes how the dependent variable changes in relation to the independent variable. In other words, how does the y variable change in relation to the x variable? Otherwise known as rate of change, the change in y divided by the change in x, or rate of change is equal to funky symbol, feel smart by knowing it. The triangle is the same as the letter delta, in the Greek alphabet. And if you looked at Finn's picture, you may have recognized that we were doing some kind of D something over D something. And I'm sorry, I'm gonna actually use that because it's such a good plug. I keep saying this, it's such a good plug. Let's see if I could pull it out and, and just have a shameless connection to. Okay, so sharing this. So as part of Finn's, uh, what is it, ex, uh, presentation, you see this like double D squared thing and a D thing? That is because they are using the, the proper, like the Greek language and stuff. But if we convert that to, I guess, modern times, that would literally be the difference, D, delta, the difference or the change in whatever this U of X T is. Okay, so like the, the, the same, obviously like some of them. Yeah. So this funky looking D is actually that triangle, which is what we're doing here. So I'm not saying you're doing the same as the math, like the crazy mathematician people who made a huge impact in the mathematical world, but we're entering, entering their world right now, okay? That is the difference in Y with the difference in X. The change in Y is the, I'm gonna call it the rise. Why? Because if you're changing in Y, you're either going up or you're going down in the graph. Change in the rise, change in the rise, okay? The change in the X value is the run. And I guess that's appropriate because we're moving left and right. We're running, you get what I'm saying? Yes, so the quick, I guess, the alliteration, rate of change, rise, run. Rate, rise, run, okay? So rate is, so rate of change, rate is rise, run, okay? 
So other people like, huh? Rise divided by run? Correct. So rise divided by run. Correct. All right. So here's an example of it in action. The cost. Pay attention to what the Y is. Pay attention to what the X is every time you approach a question. The cost of washing windows is represented in the following graph, which represents cost to the number of windows washed. Da, da, da. Determine the independent and dependent variables. Once again, someone else. Your friend is back. Say hi. <laughs> Who? Your friend. The Liam person, whatever his name was. Okay, independent. Abby. Good. And dependent, finish it off. Yeah. Okay. Is this relationship linear? Yes. Yes, it is. And look, look at how I jump. What is the rate of change? So when I ask you, what is the rate of change? I'm not asking you to describe it now. I'm asking you to calculate it. Can you do that? Find two points on the graph. So before you answer, Jack, can you give me two points on the graph? Remember, a point has to be an X and a Y, please. No, okay, go ahead. Any two points. Oh, sorry, on the dotted line. Give me a give me a point that you see. I know. Sure. What point is that? Actually, maybe not that one. How about we use this one right here? The point is the x value is a four, and the y value is 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. 16, 17, that's one of my points. Give me another point on the graph. You'll see what I'm getting at. Give me another point. Go ahead, Miles. Two and, uh, I don't know if it's 13. I see 11. So we got two and 11, which is close, all right? So from this point to that point, what is my run? How far to the right did I move? Is the, hmm? the, the change in. Don't worry about that. Though. That is just a symbol that says, tell me what the change in X is. Okay, so this is change of X. So I went from two and it became four. How much did I change by? Yeah. So delta X equals two. How much did my Y change if I went from 11 to seven? Six. And what was my rate of change formula? It was my rise over my run. It is six over two. And if you simplify it, over one. Well, you can, but when you do that and they calculate it, it becomes a three. Do it. Write it up. Yes. And what does it represent? Well, it means the change in dollars as I move one to the right is three. What does three again? What does three represent? It represents cost. What does a one represent? It re represents the number of windows. What does it represent? This is my answer. For every one window washed, the cost goes up by three. Three to one. Does that ring a bell? Ratios, proportions, it's three to one. 
Every time I move one to the right, I have to shoot up by three. That's all it means. But now you know, if I'm talking about rate of change, that single number has a huge meaning behind it. This tells you so much about that fact, just a single number. But it's up to you to understand. Miles? Um, it's more useful in, in the equation if you leave it as a ratio. So you can do it as three over one, or you can just say it's a three. And if it's a three, a lot of mathematicians simply just write this as a three because they all automatically know the denominator is a one, right? Because three is equal to three over one. Yes, Abby. No, two. So if I went to the right by two, I have to go up by six. If I move to the right by three, correct. Hence the proportion so that the ratios are coming back, right? It's always a three to one. So if I went to the right by three, I have to go up by nine, right? What is the initial value? That's a really good question. Let me reword it. If I washed zero windows, how much does it cost? If I wash zero windows, <laughs> nope. What's my Y value? That makes no sense. Does it though? Hmm. Let's pretend that, okay, let's pretend it's not a service. Let's pretend this is a cost that you have to eat. Uh, for, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I really don't know. But let's pretend. Huh? You have a suggestion? It could be. So let, let me try to explain um, the reality. Uh, if, let's put it in one perspective. Uh, I think Abby and Angus is coming from the perspective you are hiring someone, right? Sure. Let's say you're hiring someone to wash your windows for your home. Um, contrary to popular belief, even if you don't even get a service, if you hire a contractor to come to your home, there may be a visitation fee. Anyone here has had a, a plumber or someone fix a drain at your place? Did you know that if they come in and there's nothing to fix, they still still charge you? Well, if it's a free consultation, then they're trying to fish for uh, consumers, for clients. But if you're like, oh, my sink is, something's wrong with my sink or something's wrong with my laundry or whatever, whatever, and you call someone and they check it out, and they can't find anything to fix. And like, it seems to work fine now. Maybe there was some kind of freak up, like a blockage or something, and it's all free. They'll still charge you a visitation fee, right? So maybe that's what it is. I don't quite know. Let's talk about it in terms of you washing your own windows. Before you wash your windows, you have to purchase something. Water. Sure, water, soap, sponges, a spray, I don't know. So to buy the equipment, even if you, wash, you didn't wash any windows, maybe it cost you $5 to buy the soap, I don't know, right? So what is the initial fee? The initial fee is $5. What does it represent? I don't know the situation, but because it's not like $50 or $100, I'm assuming it's going to be um, buying soap or material to get ready to wash windows, right? Maybe you have to buy a bucket, you have to buy soap, you had to get a sponge, I don't know, but it cost you five bucks. Okay. Pardon me? Uh, no, water is, well, it depends on how much you use, but water is usually, in Toronto, it's usually charged like every three months. They sort of, I don't know. <laughs> it's a little hard to say. Okay. 
The rest of this is going to be all just examples. Okay, let's do this really quickly. I'm going to run through the first two examples really quick. And uh, you can try the back page uh, before we take it up. I don't have that much time anyways. 35. Got to go quick. Determine the rate of change. Uh, rate of change. Determine the rate of change. In other words, rate of change is delta Y over delta X. Part A. A car travels 240 kilometers every three hours. What's my X? What's my Y? Think about it. What affects what? Correct. The amount of time that I travel will affect how much I actually travel. Right? It's a simple sentence, but you have to be able to identify what's X and what's Y. So Y is the Y is the dependent. So my rate of change for part A, which is change in Y, what's that? Change in X. That is equal to, I changed my distance by 240 kilometers over a change of three hours. I calculate that in a, in a calculator. This becomes 80 kilometers per hour. Hey, does that ring a bell? That unit? Speed. Distance over time. Speed. Oh, this is, no, these are all separate examples. This is question A. Question B, look at this graph. What is my rate of change? Clearly, the number of years is the first column X. The number of people is the second column Y. This looks like a population of a village or something. How much am I changing by for the X values? One. So the change in X equals one. How much am I changing by in the Y values? Every time. So the change in Y is 1,000 every time. What is my rate of change? Delta Y over delta X. 1,000 over one. What does it represent? The rate of change is an additional 1,000 people per year. That's for part B, yes. Correct. They're all separate examples. Next. So if I give it to you in words, if I give it to you as a chart, or if I give it to you as a graph, you should still be able to do it. All right, for part C. Rate of change. I'll use a different color because I want you to know it's different. What is my change in X? Every staircase, how much did I change my X by? That's a Y. Let's do X first. Yep. One, what about Y? Yeah. So my rate of change. So in case you're wondering how the heck I got, uh, Miles got that number, you look at the X values, move by one, move by one, move by one, move by one to the right in the positive direction. Every single time I moved by one, I moved up by eight, up by eight, up by eight, up by eight. My change in Y is eight. Nope, I went from eight and I got to 16. So careful analysis of the graph is very important. Rate of change is delta Y over delta X, which is eight over one. What does that mean? It means I grow by eight meters squared per second or oh, per minute. Now, what would be something like that? Uh, hmm? Eight meters per um, eight meters squared. Oh, sorry. What would be a good example of eight meters squared? Uh, maybe it's because I'm into sci-fi. I'm just picturing like a, a like a poison cloud slowly getting larger and larger, larger every minute. Does that make any sense? 
No. Eight meters per second. Um, oh, how about, how about, how about um, like an hourglass with sand? Every minute, sand is coming down, right? Like every second, sand is coming. Every minute, the amount of space the sand covers grows by eight meters per second. Sure, right? So there's a lot of different aspects, but I just want you to understand what these units mean. Determine the rate of change and initial value for each. I think you could do the bottom examples on your own. I'll leave that as homework. Pardon? What number do we start with? Zero. Correct. When the X value is basically at zero. Doesn't even have to be zero because you look at the first example, it's not, right? Yes. I'm a little Not always. What if, look at this one. See this point right here and that point right there? I move to the right by two. So the x, the change in x could be a two, and so you have to do a division. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So let's do b because look. Is a slope or is a rate of change positive in this one? No, so it might be a little different. Everyone take a look. What is my delta x in this case? So here's a point. How much did I move to the right before getting to my next position? Feel them? Two. two. It's going to be two years. What is my delta y? Careful. Look at it carefully. There could be two answers, really. I'm looking for one of them. Spencer? Yes, I went down by 1,500. Let's look. Two to the right. I went down. So each box is about 500. I went down by 1,500. Two to the right. I went down by 1,500. So my delta Y is negative this time. Ooh, does that coincide with what we learned in 5.1 and 5.2? I think so. My rate of change is delta Y over delta X, which is negative 1500 over two. Plug that into the calculator. It's negative $750 per one. So don't be fooled, the X value doesn't have to be one every single time. In this particular graph, it is a two. And so when X changes by two, the Y changes by 1500. And you turn that into a unit rate, just like our unit to uh, ratio plus. One to two, Abby? So if you were to write like a chart on the graph like that one, yep. Um, how would you know? If you're analyzing it based on a chart, how much am I increasing or decreasing by every step of the way? Right. Same thing. Instead of 86, 160 thing, if I were doing here, my Y value would be 4500, 0, 0, 3000. One five zero zero and zero. So you see that I'm actually going down by fifteen hundred so in the chart. Correct. So this would be this would also be zero to four and six. Yeah. Okay. So it will always work out. You just have to be very very diligent, carefully analyze the numbers and plug it into the formula. You will get your rate of change. And that's all just based on practice. It really is. There's, there's some level of thinking. And then from there, you take the numbers and you just calculate. Okay. Of course, I have to create an answer key for this. And I do want to give you a break. Um, let's see. Is there anything that I have forgotten? We've done independent, dependent. Is it linear or nonlinear? Determine the rate of change. What does it represent? Determine the initial. Next example, 
determine the rate of change, what does it represent? Determine every example question we have on this sheet, we have done before in our previous examples. So I'm going to stop here and ask you to try it on your own. The answer key will be made available on our Google Classroom before the end of today. I hope you'll get a chance to practice and check your answers to make sure they are correct.